do want to ask you when the, the opportunity presented itself, was this as simple as basically going, I'm not passing up the opportunity to tell a story about a cultural phenomena mm -hmm. and someone who was so groundbreaking? Or did you have hesitation? You know, I'll put it this way. I never, when I keep it to myself and when I talk to other Asian Americans about insanity, it's always understood. Like we know that was special because we don't have to explain it anymore, right? Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the birth of this idea. Um, this was like 2020. I was having a conversation with one of my producers, Trayvon Free, about impossible moments, right? What is a moment when someone, when society at large assigns to a group of people saying, you can't do this, and then someone comes out of nowhere and shatters that, right? And we were talking about it in the context of Obama becoming president, because that is the biggest impossible moment any of us have lived through, just objectively, yeah. right? So he was like, like, what, what other moments feel like that? And I was like, listen, man, I'm Asian. So I only have one answer in his insanity. And I, I told him about my night when Jeremy dropped 38 in the garden. That's where the name of the movie comes from. It's from that conversation. I was living in DC at the time and I took the train up to New York and I tried to get in the garden and the scalpers were like trying to charge me like $700, right? I'm 27 years old, I got no money, right? So <laughs> I go to Koreatown, I go to Koreatown and like, it's right next door to the, to the garden, right? And I sit down at one of the karaoke bars and like, I'm just like, all right, I'll just watch it here. It's the best I can do. And looking back on it, I don't think I would have traded the experience I had for being in the garden itself. Because I'm surrounded by people who look like me or my age, or maybe a little older. And, you know, you saw the game, you saw the movie, like Jeremy played out of his mind for the whole game. So you have two hours of people just losing their mind, right? They're running around, they're screaming. They're, they're crying and they're, it's just incredible. And I'm doing all of that too, but I'm just trying to take it all in. I'm like, is it the stereotypes people experience and this is a cathartic reaction to that? Is it maybe never living up to the dreams of their parents' expectations and having to deal with that? Like, is it both? I mean, it was, it was certainly both for me. Um, and when I told that, it was telling that to someone who is an Asian, when I told it to Trayvon, he was just like, how is that not a movie? Like, are you serious? Like, that is, that's an incredible story. And I, I'll tell you what, you know, the first part of the movie is called Doubt. I think the first thing I did when he, I said that to him was to doubt that. Because I was like, you know, like, people don't care what Asian people think in this country, we're invisible. And Linsani happened eight years ago, right? And I thought about it a little more. And I was like, man, like, this is 2020. So anti-Asian violence is already starting to pick up. And I was like, if we can tell the story and tell it about stereotypes, and we, you know, and Jeremy is down to do so, you know, to like bring his story, not just out of his own personal experience, but for the community to experience it that way. Um, then, then we got to do it. Then, then it's something that has to be told 10 years later in this context. It is a, I mean, it's a larger than basketball, larger than sports movie. It's a movie about the power of sports and that how that can elevate certain people's life experiences for the whole world to pay attention to. And that to me, has always been why I love sports and why this, to me, as a sports movie, you, I have a hard time thinking that if you're watching the movie or the end of the movie, you're thinking about basketball. You're thinking about you. You're thinking about your life. You're thinking about how you take in the daily stereotypes that sort of consume so much of us um, and how we manage it, right? So that, that's, that's why we made this movie. That was the birth of the idea. When we came to Jeremy about it, you know, he's so humble. He was just like, are you sure it was that big of a deal? I was just trying to make it in the league, <laughs> right? And like, I, would, I, look, I really respect it and appreciate that that was the perspective he was coming from. Um, but I had to be like, listen, man, like that, like two most magical nights of my life on a larger like societal level, like the night Obama was elected president and the night you dropped 38 in the garden, right? And like, I wanted to, to, I wanted to tell the story from that perspective. And I think we achieved that with this movie. No, a hundred percent. And and just real quick, I I want to know quickly, was there a courting process for Jeremy? Like you said, was there a hesitation for him? And also, I guess bigger picture too, because like when we're living out, when we're trying to to aspire to our dreams, right? And I'm a first generation american mm. here with, with my parents and mm. you know when, you, when you're bringing up now you want to make it in entertainment and any sort of facet like still to this day i don't think my parents actually understand what i do day to day they're like oh you talk sports and i've been lucky enough there's been a couple <laughs> games on espn that like 
I'm in the background in the press and they're like, Oh, okay. Okay. He's, he's doing some cause I see him on TV, but I don't think they yeah. really, they really grasp what we're trying to do, whether being a director, trying to be a movie star, trying to be an athlete. For sure. And for Jeremy, he was trying to make it to the league. That's all he thought. Right. And then now he becomes a cultural phenomenon and with great power comes great responsibility. And now sure. he is, he's an icon and there's responsibilities that come with that. So I'm curious as you're telling this story and as you tie it into what was going on at the height of the pandemic and all this Asian hate, do you think he really um, just basically like, did he understand that responsibility? Did that weigh, did that weigh him down? Do you feel like he shied away from it um, in, in your time spent making this documentary and talking to him? Oh, absolutely not. Um, he was, I think, the first person that I remember who was like an Asian American celebrity who said something um, when all of this was picking up because he was talking about in the context of things being said to him during games when the pandemic was just starting. Right. And that that was like a really, really vivid memory for for me. And just in the conversations we've had, the fact that he chose to do this movie. Right. The way he talked I me. Mean, look, not everybody is comfortable sharing their story in a collective way. Right. That's just I understand that. Um, yeah. But the fact that he was um, and I mean, you've seen the movie, the, the ending isn't really about Jeremy. The ending is about like what it's like to be Asian in America. Jeremy actually has a great line in the movie. He was like, it's so weird to relive Len Sandy to 10 years later um, because that was such an incredible moment. But it's all like, you know, this is the worst time to be Asian American in recent memory. So it's just really strange to like relive our favorite memory as Asian Americans during the worst time to be Asian American in recent memory. Yeah. Um, that it's a, it's a cruel irony for, for this, this moment uh, but I also think, you know, as long as this is the reality of the situation that we're in, having stories that can be more universal than just, you know, Asian people talking about it, like Lynn Sanity, it's an opportunity for us to have these hard conversations in a way that can be productive, right? Um, so that was very much like in, in the process of, of uh, Jeremy agreeing to do this, going from you know, this is a story that uh, you hold very personally about insanity, right? About your life to, okay, now we're going to tell this story from the perspective of the Asian fan about why it brought up so many emotions, why people were running down. I mean, like telling you about that bar earlier, there's somebody at the end of the game who didn't pay their tap and just ran out the bar in tears, right? Yeah. The bartender didn't even do anything. The bartender was just like, okay, you know, this was one of those nights. So I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let it go, right? Like, like, this is very much from that perspective about watching someone like Jeremy, you know, pull off the feet that he did, especially the night he did it against the Lakers. Um, so when we brought it to that perspective, when we, when we said, okay, this is the larger than life story, um, that's when everything sort of came together for us. And I, I got to say, I've been part of like many creative projects. Sometimes they go off the, you know, just off the deep end and they end up being terrible products. And sometimes they just feel like a magical ride where a lot of people will just hone in on, on one mission and uh, we, we build something special. And this is definitely, definitely the latter.